Hello everyone and welcome to the Sweeney Show Business and Law Podcast. Uh, joining me here today is a really exciting guest. It's Dave Young of uh, the Fitness uh, Nutrition Dietary Coaching company, coaching business, I coaching, yeah. uh, go beyond. Uh, Dave, yeah. you're uh, very welcome here this morning. No, I, I appreciate having me on. Um, so, Dave, the uh, the online. Well, let's, let's speak about the fitness industry in so, general. It's yeah. it's kind of like it's always been topical, but your business is just online coaching, is it? It's completely online. Yeah, um, I I started it back in 2014, and no one was really doing it at that point. Um, which was great because I didn't have much competition. Um, I was able to get results with people. Pe- people were happy with that, so it kind of took off really organically. Sorry, is, is, do you have a fitness background? Is it, you have, yeah. Really? So, um, so my background itself is um, I. Okay, so I started off. I went to college. I went to do computing in college. Um, massive tech background from a young age, all that. Um, so I was going to college, CAT. Kind of started going to the gym at the same time. And I think most people that are in the fitness industry would kind of, you know, get into the gym first, say, right, okay, this is a bit of a passion, and then go from there. So what I did was after my degree, did you start? Did you go to gym for fitness? Were you in bodybuilding? Yeah. So um, it was kind of it was kind of for fitness at the start. Um, like I suppose in a way the fitness industry is kind of built in insecurities like most people get into it because they're unhappy with how they look um, and with social media and all that kind of taking off after it kind of amplified that but I suppose bringing it back um, I got into it myself just because I was quite small I wasn't too happy with how I looked um, and as a result I said right I'll join the gym so I suppose I got bullied a bit before when I was younger um, and I was a very skinny lad so I wasn't too confident so I said right I'll join the gym do something about it kind of thing um, I, I presume then the gym or is the, the discipline of going to the gym and the actual mm. working out process that kind of helps your mental health as well absolutely it? like even e- even from like a like when you dedicate yourself to something and you get a result it's it, it, it seems like a very simple um, sense of achievement? Yeah, I suppose it's a sense of achievement, but like I suppose when I was in school, I was in three different secondary schools. Um, I was never a high achiever in that way, so the gym for me was kind of like, okay, I can put this time in and I get something back. And, and there's no kind of blurring the lines there, if you put the time in, you get it back. So like, gym for me kind of taught me in a way that um, once you put time in something, you, you, you will get it back kind of thing. So, so I got into the gym anyway, and then decided, right, okay, I think I can kind of make a career out of this. Um, but even before that, I went to compete in the bodybuilding show. Um, that's, that's huge dedication, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like it's obsessive. Um, I'm is not there a weight category then or what? How does yeah, that? So, so like there's a few different types of shows. There'd be shows that would be say weight category, there would be height based ones. Um, I did a junior, I did a, a junior which was an age kind of category. I came second Mr. Cork 2014, um, which, which I'm really proud of. Obviously I wanted the first. But um, yeah, so that went really well. And then after, kind of naturally, people just started asking me, you know, will you give me a hand with this or will you give me a hand with their nutrition or whatever? And so you were able to use your own experience yeah, then? Yeah, and I, I suppose it, it kind of became a passion as I got into it kind of thing. Um, so people asked for diet plans, so yeah, no bother, just helping our friends here and there. And they're like, geez, I'm getting great results, I'm really happy with this. So it kind of grew organically that way instead of like, I, I, I've always heard that, you know, the best type of businesses start from, you know, either, either doing something for yourself, like solving a problem or, or solving so a problem. That's need. Yeah, exactly. So I, I suppose from that then I just saw an opportunity and said, right, let's see how that goes kind of thing. Um, and then when people, I suppose, at the start, they approached you, mm. it was physical, they met you and said, Dave, listen, exactly, I'm taking yeah. going to a competition or I yeah. want to lose weight or, or tone up or whatever yeah, it might be. Exactly, and yeah. then how did you then transfer or see the market that was going online? Yeah, so um, I kind of looked to o- o- other parts of the world. So say in the UK, it was quite big. In the US, it was kind of kicking off as well. Um, and I kind of saw Ireland as kind of being behind the US and the UK. Um, I suppose with my tech background as well, it, I, I saw the opportunity for more scale online versus in person. Um, because as a personal trainer, you have a set period of time that you can really dedicate 100% to every client. And then you're, you're trading hours for hours. Whereas online, if you improve systems, you improve the efficiency of your service, you're able to provide to a larger audience. And so what's the practicality of starting an online, if I was an, uh, yeah. wanted to uh, cool. become yeah. an online client of yours? Yeah, so, so essentially how it works So do we ever meet? 
Uh, Physically, do we need to meet? We generally, no, we don't okay. need to. Um, yeah. there's, there's pros and cons, of course, to both. Um, say if you came to me and said, look, Dave, uh, like, um, I, I, I want to lose X amount or I want to do this, I want to do that. Say, cool, no problem. I'll, I'll send you out a long questionnaire. Oh, I want to get rid of the dad bod. Right? Yeah, here, <laughs> join the club. Um, but I'll send you a long questionnaire. You'd fill it out. We'd go through it. Um, and we'd kind of look at your lifestyle, we'd see what we could change, what we could improve, and just small steps along the way. So the way we do it then is every week you'd check in with us, you'd say, okay, this is how my week went, this came up, I'm not sure how I felt about this, and then kind of also... And do you, do you encapsulate then sleep, nutrition, sleep, nutrition, emotional, energy, relationships, relationships work. everything. So it, it's... It, it, it kind of like marries, a holistic kind yeah, of thing, massively. It? Like it kind of marries counselling somewhat. Not that I'm qualified or yeah. anything, but I always try to look at um, the reasons behind everything else. Like most people say, if you couldn't stick to a diet plan, they'll go off, they'll beat themselves up, and they'll try to do it again on Monday. When in reality, they might have, you know, um, stress in their relationships, stress in their job, um, something happening, say last year, that they can relate to, but they wouldn't just be aware of it. So I try to bring awareness back to all the reasons behind. Um, I suppose reasons why they find just getting in shape hard, um, but yeah, no, um, it's and do you think then really well so far? Yeah, no, I, I, we can all see it. It's no, the success is going that. from strength to strength. I but do you think that, that the, uh, there's a certain uh, type of your client, no one in particular, but that there's a pressure on people at the moment to have a perfect body with the Absolutely, explosion yeah. of social media, Instagram, and Absolutely. edited photos on Instagram. Do you know, like, what, what what's yeah. the perception? Because you said um, at the start that, you know, a lot of the fitness industry is built on insecurities. Mm -hmm. So, like, are, yeah. are is Instagram playing on people's insecurities that you need to have the six-pack or you need to have the perfect ways. world? Um, I think over the past few years, it definitely went towards that, saying, you know, you have to look a certain way, you have to be a certain way, you have to be this and be that, or else you're a nobody, essentially, especially with... Um, social media, the engagement, the, the, the engagement and audience that people kind of um, attain would be generally through pictures that would be aesthetically pleasing. Um, like say, for example, different types of people on social media realizing that, okay, well, if I post a picture of me in my bikini or with abs out or whatever, I get better engagement. Whereas if I just post a picture of me just sitting down and say, say we're just chatting or whatever, yeah. it would probably have less engagement. So like naturally, I think the feedback loop for people is, right, I get better engagement doing this that. This works, keep doing so it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. And I think that kind of feeds into itself. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's I think it's bad in that way. But I think in recent months anyway, I think people are becoming a lot more aware of it. Um, I suppose through the likes of Blogs on Rails or Fit from Failures and all that. Not that I would fully agree with Fit from Failures, but... Um, are you Fit from Failures? I'm definitely not Fit from Failures. <laughs> I've been asked I was to told to ask that. Sorry, sure, sure, look. Put you on yeah, the curveball. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I think I think there's a lot more awareness. But I think now. those pages had mm. certainly a social use or, st you know, they brought the awareness so. around because if someone is selling a product mm -hmm. and like if and if people are being influenced by that person holding that product with a large audience but they're not saying they're getting paid for that product yeah. they're losing their credibility absolutely yeah like even if like i don't know about you but if you're on instagram and see i suppose it it has two kind of sides of it really because it did bring that awareness to it but now i also think that People have, have uh, like it, are conscious it, of if I don't yeah, do it right, I'm exactly, called out. Yeah, exactly. And like even even from the consumer point of view, if they say hash, if if they see hashtag ad, they might go, oh, okay, well, I'm not listening to it anyway. So I think it's nearly destroyed influencer marketing in a way, for for bad, for good, I'm not sure. But definitely the awareness from those pages that they created is is like, it, oh, well, I personally think it was needed. Like especially with the new where standards was, that yeah, brought where in. Yeah, where was it going to end? I suppose. Do you know? Like, is, is are the pictures going to be more and more photoshopped? Would, would it have just kept going that way, and then made people even more conscious of how they look? You know. Um, so no, I think the awareness definitely benefited people's mental health and, I suppose, their own perception of themselves and knowing that. But it, I, like, it, it's a huge market still, isn't it? You know, oh, I think it especially is, on yeah. Instagram and influencer marketing. Yeah. Like people have built up huge audiences now. Huge, Some of those yeah. aren't all organic, yeah. and there is people have if bought actually, audiences. If you actually look at all of the accounts um, from, say, when Bloggers Unveiled came out to where they are now, say the larger accounts, um, so the big time influencers, all their engagement and all their um, audiences have kind of dropped off a bit, whereas the smaller accounts have grown. I, I presume they would naturally grow anyway. Like, 
the, the bigger accounts would still have grown, say, on a linear kind of scale. Sure. But their own engagement, say, with comments or pictures would have lowered over sure. the rise and fall of the And if you have available. a smaller audience, like a micro market, it's, nearly it's local, and then if you get a hit of a bloggers avail, it, you kind of explode nationally into yeah, a short yeah, term. Yeah. It's I a huge percentage. Both kind of relate to that <laughs> on some kind of level anyway. Yeah, yeah. and um, no comment. <laughs> 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 I'm legally bound not to say anything. Um, so but where do you think it's... Like, where's the future then for like influence market? If you just want to just we'll finish up, we'll move on to our next topic Jeez, then. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it would be great to see a bit of a rise with it again. Um, it would be great to see it be more authentic and and for people to kind of bring it to a point where you know the consumers can believe in it again, um, because it is a brilliant platform and you know like you 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 get a you get you get a look into someone's life. Um, and on a very personal level in, in large things. So of course, they need to get some kind of return on, on what they do. So I think if, if, if it's done in an authentic way, brilliant. Sure. Yeah. Um, just on to, back onto fitness. Mm. So you have your um, client to contacts here, wants to improve themselves yeah, that way. Yeah. How do they read between the lines of these fitness fads that are out there? Like every couple of yeah. years or six months, there's something. It just goes on a constant cycle, really, by the looks of it. Like, at the moment, it's intermittent fasting, which is great. There's nothing wrong with it. But but next month or next few months, there'll be something else then. Um, so just explain intermittent fasting. Yeah. So like intermittent fasting kind of goes back to evolutionary times or caveman times, where you know um, you used to only eat one big meal and then you'd probably fast for a period of time because naturally food wasn't as available as it is today. So um, you'd say fast for a large portion of your day and then you'd have an eating window, say a six hour eating window, where you would have all your food throughout that window. So it's, it's, it's great for gut health, it's, it's great for cravings, it's great to bring more awareness to the food. It's not make a lot of people hangry. Here, <laughs> like, 100%. Does affect your like, mood, I, like your yeah, diet and like all that? I, like, like I think at the start, um, people would definitely be hungry because they're used to eating constantly throughout the day. But as time goes on, your body kind of takes a bit of a shift or your cravings take a bit of a shift, which makes it just a lot more um, sustainable for people, I suppose, that way. Um, but but is, is that, is it, I suppose, I it's not actually what we do with people. Like we, sure, we, no, I know we, you don't. Yeah, yeah sorry, just that def- that's what that fad is. Yeah. Um, but is your body physically able to mm. sustain itself with only one kind of imp- a short impact yeah, of nutrients so, so into like it over that 24 hour body period. fat is actually there to kind of serve that purpose like if if, if we go back um so, uh, so it's a store that when it's, you need it's a store essentially it, okay. like before body fat was seen as a good thing because it allowed us to you know survive two times where we didn't have food these days the image has changed so that body fat isn't seen as a good thing because everyone wants to be lean and chiseled and all this but it's funny that our bodies still haven't really caught up with how available food is these days. So like if, 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 if you look at, you know, um, snacking mentality or, you know, constant meals throughout the day or this and that and this and or a cake here, a cake there, our, our bodies were never used to that. So I think that's why the rise of obesity and everything has come true because it's nearly like the industrial revolution has brought um, so much accessibility to food, whereas we never had it before. So our bodies are kind of used to being here where we, we don't have as much food as, as or we're used to not having as much food as we sure. do now. So, 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 so that's where excessive body so fat is, and all that is, comes from. Is through. part then of um, the fitness industry, not, uh, sorry, your fitness programming would be not, mm. not just the actual physical exercise and that, but like the choices you make Absolutely. for your diet. Yeah, like I, like I think it's a, it's a big thing um, these days and, and there's definitely more awareness in later year, or in recent years and in, in your business then yeah. I presume each one is subjective it's, it's specific yeah. to that client because oh, some might have shift work yeah. might be working 9 to 5 completely tailored to their lifestyle what food they like what food they enjoy um, what intolerances allergies pretty much everything changes on a week to week basis because like not many people are going to follow a set plan for X amount of time and enjoy it. And if the enjoyment isn't there, the sustainability isn't there. And if the sustainability isn't there and if they don't enjoy it, the adherence isn't there. So, you know, people talk about all these, all these different fads like carb cycling or carb backloading or intermittent fasting or Atkins diet or uh, keto diet, which is an Atkins diet. Um, when, re- when in reality, number one is if, if a plan isn't adherable, it's it's, it's, work. It's, yeah, exactly. You know, so I think people miss the ball. I think if they could just put together some kind of healthy eating plan that they can stick to, that fits their lifestyle, you know, a shift work or whatever, and just foods that they enjoy, they get a lot more from that than try to follow this fat or that fat. And how close is it or is there a connection where 
that a person can go beyond in their mental health, mm. uh, I suppose, their, not their fear, but their desire to have the perfect body, to have the perfect yeah. life, does that ever cross a line for people where into an eating disorder, into a mental yeah, health issue, an anxiety, some absolutely. kind of insecurity? Yeah, like it, these days, especially with the rise of social media and with the importance on everyone, um, I, I, I suppose, feeling the need to be perfect and all that, um, it, it happens to pretty much everyone I know in the fitness industry um, that get into it are never happy. Okay. So, but see, from what I can see from the outside, maybe I'm wrong. It, it, the, if you run a fitness business, it seems very competitive. Yeah, like, highly and saturated, it, and yeah. it can be quite toxic. Yeah, that rather than like build your own business up tear, on your own good things, you're down. trying to tear, stand up on other yeah. people's failures. Yeah, I, like it. It seems that way um, a lot of the time, and especially over the last few years, I suppose, because it's such a heavily saturated industry, and everyone, um, it, it's so easy, to, so easy to become a PT. Um, I guess everyone else then, if they're not doing well, it's instantly like, oh, they're doing well, they're doing well, I'm not doing well, so so they're the enemy. And I do think there's a bit of a shift, but there is definitely still that mentality. Like, I don't know about your industry, um, just purely because I'm not in it, but I, I doubt it is as much as a tear down everyone else kind of industry. <laughs> well, it's very competitive. Yeah. It is very competitive, and yeah. Would it be... Well, I think most people... Uh, maybe it's slightly different in fitness where in the legal business you can actually establish either niche so you can do personal injury you can do property you can do employment law you can do pr probate yeah. commercial stuff uh, whereas in fitness it's all kind fitness, of it seems to just be all encompass yeah, and that you just go to the one source for it yeah. where uh, yes there are a lot of solicitors here there's a lot of fantastic solicitors mm -hmm. especially in Cork it's and there's a huge network of uh, Collegiate, uh, I suppose, help and support. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, but businesses fail all the time, whether you're a sister yeah. or not. It's up to yourself as an individual your whether you're going to work hard and make it work hard for you. Yeah. Um, and where do you think the. Uh, where does mental health fit into all of that? Okay, so like. Mental what's your own experience of, say, yeah. you know, your, your clients or your personal yeah. experience so, um, where it goes? So I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk about my own personal experience first. Um, I suppose growing up being bullied, um, all of that. Um, my parents separated when I was 11, um, which, which wasn't the most stable childhood, I suppose. Um, and I think that kind of, for me personally... Your brothers and sisters? Yeah, so, so, I, so I have two younger brothers. Um, so I suppose that for me personally kind of... Um, well, that like, was a huge event. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, like I think that kind of carries on into your own relationships and your own kind of mindset around things as you go forward. It, it definitely had an impact on me, not that I was aware of it to begin with. Um, so about two years ago, I, I started going to counselling myself. I had the first kind of, like my, my first thought of it would be, this is going to be a load of, you mm -hmm. know, um, and I went in, whatever, and I, I found that I got a lot from it. Yep. Um, e e even just on, you know, basic things, like there was nothing majorly wrong with me. Um, I, I, I've never seen myself as, some, as having mental health issues or having anxiety or depression. I, I, I don't think it's fair to label myself with that when other people suffer a lot more. Um, but that, that was a huge, brave decision for you to yeah. do that, you know, to A, acknowledge that there's something here just not sitting right exactly, with me. You know. B, there is options, not to cure myself, but that mm. might make, make, make it a bit a easier. But to take that, st I think it's an Irish mentality as well, Absolutely, like the stigma yeah, yeah. of mental health. Now, I think yeah. it is changing. It's definitely I think changing. there's huge work going on with agencies and paid house yeah, and like, agree, and, yeah. and people are more sympathetic. But I think with, uh, with which meant if you break your leg, you can see you go to the hospital, put in a cast. You can't Three months later, you're, you're fixed. Yeah. When you have mental health, yeah. it's sometimes a cycle. And like we've had people on the show here and they like how, the, the first uh, Irish, this isn't to go at the Irish medical profession, but they like to medicate quite soon. Very fast. Where yeah. Without looking at maybe um, a holistic approach, and exercise, counselling, yes, all that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think I think that's hugely brave for you no, to be no, so vulnerable that, and have the strength yeah. to actually go and find a solution no, really that may work that. for you. I suppose at the time um, it was something that was, I suppose, a really scary thing to do. Um, but I was kind of at a point in my life where I was like, look, I need to sort out these few things and we'll, see, we'll just see what comes of it. Like, I can't, I can't lose from it kind of thing. It, it can only improve, really. Um, so I guess from that, it kind of brought my own awareness to my own mental health. Um, and then did you learn uh, what the triggers might be? Did you learn to give you exactly, tools to actually cope with it better? Yeah, um, so, so for me anyway, um, from my childhood, it, it pretty much came from like say my father leaving um, or being bullied in school it was kind of always um, kind of all, always kind of shadowed by not being good enough um, which seems like a really kind of 
simple idea to forget. Was that an internal pressure then you put on yourself? Yes, I suppose an internal pressure that kind of, I suppose the body blend kind of fed, kind of fed, in, fed into it because for me, I didn't see myself as good enough, say physically, mentally, academically, in any kind of sense. So um, it definitely became an, an obsession through that, if, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so it, it was kind of always that, and then we worked on that and kind of learned, I suppose, coping mechanisms through different words. I used to say to myself, not words, but kind of negative self-talk, say, or automatic negative thoughts and all these different processes that you kind of work through. Um, and what I found over the past two years is it's kind of taken me from someone that would overthink everything, maybe second guess myself, or like I think we all doubt ourselves from time to time. I'd be a liar if I said I still didn't. Um, but it's definitely given me coping mechanisms and understanding of myself that enables me to push forward say, in business or personal life or deal with conflict when it comes up whereas before I wouldn't have been confident in that area so like what I'd like to say is you know you'd go to a personal trainer if you need to work on your fitness you'd go to a physio if you need to work on an injury you go to your doctor if you've a broken leg why isn't like why is there a stigma around you know if if you have issues with the way you think about things why don't you go to a counselor or why don't you go to a life coach or why don't you as you said, the stigma is definitely changing, but it's still, I think, to the point where it needs to go a lot more. How, um, how does that? How, what, how, what, how does that happen? How I do guess? we get there? Yeah. Yeah, like I suppose for myself, I try to share a lot of my own um, mental health kind of posts and stuff like that on social media, and just as as we were saying previously, kind of being vulnerable and just putting yourself out there. And I think coming back to social media with everything that happened in the last couple of months. Yeah, but I, th I think positivity kind of wins in the long term, doesn't it? Yeah, like, I, I, as you were saying, tearing others down. To build yourself up. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really benefit yourself in the long no. term because you carry that. Yeah. Instead of carrying a mindset that, right, okay, this, this is where I am currently, where can I bring, or what can I do right now that will positively impact my life or positively impact the lives around me? Because I definitely think people you surround yourself with um, and I'd, I'd, I'd say you can probably even just be around different people here um, it, it definitely makes a big difference to your own life on a long-term basis rather than you know hating people here or hating on there or whatever because it definitely sits with you or I find it sits with you because I would have done that in the past but I suppose just having more mental, more awareness of myself I would exactly but yeah. the kind of self-awareness is probably the greatest tool you can have whether like, it's in personal yeah. business if you're aware of who yourself. you are, how you sit in society or in business, yeah, your own talents, your own shortfalls. Yeah. And what you can work on then as a mm. result. Whereas if you don't have that self-awareness, where do you really know where you need to put your time? Yeah. You know? And it's the same with business. That's tough to find that, you know, because you, you have tough. to go through a lot to really figure out to, who to you are internally. Yeah. yeah, and you mightn't like what you find sometimes. No, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, I think people are, I, I, I think most people either think they have self-awareness um, when they mightn't or they have self-awareness which is brilliant or like I, I definitely think there's an Irish mentality of kind of being in denial and I think that comes from previous generations where you, you don't talk about it you just get on with it you toughen up you man up sweep under the carpet exactly and, and, and especially as men as well we're yeah. supposed to be the rock are we supposed to you know be that strong figure in the family that doesn't talk about their emotions pushes on and all that um, so yeah no I, d I, d I definitely think well I think I think that's certainly changing. I think this talk today, if anyone listened to yourself, that yeah. it's now vulnerability is real strength. Yeah, 100%. Isn't it? Put yeah. yourself out there yeah, 100%, uh, and be prepared that not everybody's going to accept or like what you have to say, okay. but that's you. Yeah, and like I, like I think at the end of the day, if, if we all just stop trying to be liked by everyone, because in reality, there's no way everyone can like you anyway. Um, I, I, I personally don't think that and if, if you can just be yourself and you can be happy being yourself on a day to day basis and just make peace with the fact that X, Y and Z person might not like you just for being you it's pretty okay with me <laughs> it's alright yeah <laughs> you know? exactly well Dave thank you very much for your time no, today no, it's been a real pleasure it. uh, it's been a real fascinating Thanks and interesting conversation yeah. uh, I want to wish you the very best of luck I with your that. personal and your business uh, we can get you on Instagram is yeah Davey uh, so it's at Davey on Instagram at Davey yeah. um, or on Facebook the business page is go beyond um, just drop me a message if you need any help or any questions or anything like that I'm always happy to brilliant as much advice as well Dave thank you very much I you're very best of luck thank you cheers it.